And welcome back to the Wicked Wild Podcast, a feral podcast for the uncivilized horror fans. And usually I have some, you know, big news that's going on. Obviously, the the year's winding down, but I did get a note uh, from my buddy Eli uh, just this morning, um, just a passionate request that uh, he wanted the opportunity to share a big holiday greeting with our entire audience at the top of the podcast. He he's kind of been drafting sort of his Christmas blessing that he wanted to give everybody. Ooh. So I'm going to hand mm-hmm. off to Eli and let him do that right now. Uh, yeah, everybody. I just want to say I'm super excited for this Christmas season. If you can see my new uh, Christmas sweater. Look at uh, that. Look, look at Beautiful. it. For those that I, don't watch our YouTubes, what uh, Eli is wearing is his prize for mm-hmm. me finishing the yeah. video he requested. Um, it's a naked mole rat seductively wrapped in Christmas lights. Which, if I'm being honest, uh, I was expecting much worse from you people. And if this is what you throw at me, hey, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I can live with it. Uh, but yeah, I listen, I, uh, you know, I'll be honest, you, you know, it, uh, what made it really easy for me to uh, fall in love and let my heart grow three sizes too big this Christmas season mm. uh, is the fact that the movie we're going to talk about ruined Thanksgiving for me forever. Uh, so that helped. Um, and uh, also, you know, if you think about it, uh, who can't love this glorious time of year uh, when uh, at any moment a electric Santa Claus could blow up and murder you. So Merry Christmas, everybody. That's your holiday mm. well wish. I haven't done a holiday well That'll wish. never happen again, audience. I Listen, apologize. I, do you know when the last time I did a holiday well wish? Never, Dave. That's my first one. Okay. I'm a little out of practice. <laughs> yeah, you need to work on it. You know, so before we get into everything, we're going to introduce the rest of our uh, guests or our hosts. We don't have guests tonight. We have family. Uh, we'll start with Jamie up in New York. So as I was watching this, because I hadn't seen one in such a long time, I did get curious because I don't think we've ever actually had a deep conversation about this. But what is your overall opinion of Eli Roth? Like, where does he land in your? It's horror? funny. I feel like I always complain about him, but like, I think it's more of just because you see him a lot. Like he's made Mm -hmm. his way into every like AMC special and like all these things and other movies. But like, so I think I bitch about him more than I actually care. It's not like how I feel about Rob Zombie, who I'm so over and like, you know, Eli Roth, like loves horror movies. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I really like Cabin Fever, the original. Mm. I really like Hostel. That's really him too, right? Like, so really, like, I can't really pick on Eli Roth overall. I, I don't think he's a bad dude. I think he's just shoved in your face a little too much. Yeah, he was but overhyped there for about that, 10 years. Yeah, he's overhyped. But I guess, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, there will be, to some degree, a soft spot for people, directors, whatever, that really, truly love what they do. And Eli yeah. Roth, I mean, come on. <laughs> and, and I think you'll always have a soft spot for him, particularly just because of his wet T-shirt performance. <laughs> Piranha. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's the thing. He's like one of those He's dudes everywhere. that like will make fun of himself, too. And it's mm-hmm. like to the degree of where you can't like you're like, all right. He's not, he's probably not a bad dude. Now, listen, I don't know any behind the scenes. If there's anything that someone's about to tell me about Eli Roth that I was unaware of, if he's been canceled, I don't fucking know. Yeah. I, but I haven't heard anything. So, yeah, I don't Eli think they Roth would be is... giving him money to make movies if he was. <laughs> <laughs> True. I just, but, but like, <laughs> sorry, bear with me. Um, but no, I guess overall, I'm going to say Eli Roth is probably a fine dude. Yeah. I, I'm all right with him. Uh, he's yeah. all right. Yeah, I, I agree. And we'll get into it some more. But, but yeah, he's, you can't help but applaud the guy who you can tell, like the way he makes movies, you can tell he was a 12 year old kid who just loved horror movies. Like he just grew up in the yeah. genre. So, and like, I mean, and Inglorious Bastards, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Like, I won't, I won't take that away. I mean, that's like, Come on. It's, yeah, fucking fantastic. So, all right. But so, yeah. So, Eli Roth, he's fine. He's fine yeah. in my book. He's yeah. you good dude. You share a beer with him. Oh, like yeah. Him, so. <laughs> Absolutely, I would. I had that opportunity. And then we've got John up in Michigan area, uh, the Metropolitan Detroit, Michigan. Ooh, we're getting specific today. Fancy. Uh, in case Santa Claus is listening and needs to dial in one more. Oh, us. dude, Santa, hook a brother up this year. <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you is, because obviously it's a, it's a big part of what we're going to talk about, the movie we're talking about tonight, but have you ever done the Black, 
the Black Friday feral shopping thing? Like, was there a oh. thing that you had to have that you went and did the Black Friday thing? For? Uh, there was a couple of years. It wasn't a lot, but there was a couple of years where me and my mom would literally leave Thanksgiving and we would just go and do some quick Christmas shopping. This wasn't like the crazy, we're going to stomp people to death. We was like right before that, once it got to like the fevered pitch that this movie's referencing, mm -hmm. we were like, yeah, no, we're good. Cause it was mostly like, there was like two things everybody wanted, like two in stock of that one thing right. that everybody wanted. So no, it was like pointless, but it was kind of like fun. It was like a little bit of like, yeah, just we it, did it once too, my mom yeah. and I. It's, it's fun to go to the mall at night. That was right, why we did it. Right. Like it was super cool to just, it was after Thanksgiving. Like you just said, we were all done. Like people were right. either like, and, and you kind of finished early. And my mom and I were like, do you want to try it? Let's try it. And we did it like once. Yeah, <laughs> had the yeah, experience. We, yeah, yeah, we did it a couple of years. Like we were, well, you're like, like Jamie said, you're like, it's an offbeat time. It's like, and generally everybody's like, I don't know. I remember the deals being like a, quite ex exceptional like, compared to today like today's i don't know black friday deals there's some okay deals they're fine they're, it's nothing crazy yeah. like back then they were like 50 percent off everything <laughs> right get out here and like yeah so there's a little bit of excitement your tummy's full it's like gives me an excuse to move around you know mm -hmm. like work off some of those calories yeah it gives you a thing to do yeah yeah, yeah that night is usually family. dead anyway yeah. like you're dead after like six like you got nothing to do unless people watch football but my yeah. mom and i were not so. <laughs> like when i grew up no one went because uh you were getting ready for deer season which started monday and like that helped people get through the winter like the you know, the meat stuff so, like that was precedent and then when i moved up to pittsburgh that was that was probably like the last year like 2015 that it was actually like big before it just kind of died away. And uh, my roommate at the time convinced me to like go with him because he wanted to get something. And like, we got down to like the shopping area near our apartment and I get out of my car and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go to Barnes and Noble and get a bottle of wine. I think he's get a book and I'll buy a book, read and drink coffee sure, while he yeah. does the thing. And like, I'm, so I'm trying to get to Barnes and Noble and like, there's just all these people standing there and I'm like, I'm trying to excuse me. They're like, well, you gotta get the back of the line. I said, what it's line? And then they put <laughs> they put it like down the sidewalk, and I was like, "Nope." I was like, "Nope, not doing that." I'm gonna sit in the car, play my phone. That's what I did. <laughs> oh, sure, you had a phone you could play with. Ooh, <laughs> listen, I listen, Dave. I grew up in the time in the country where we didn't have cell service, and I took a book with me everywhere. Oh, so, I'm like, not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying. I'm so old that he that was, was so not an option. You, you should have took a book, bro. I when I was, I, it doesn't matter. Like I said, they didn't have cell service where I grew up. Till I was like, I graduated high school. I took a book with me everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. How do you think I run the? I read the Dark Tower series. There's 1,100 books in that series. Took one with me everywhere I went. And that voice that you hear is our Christmas baby elf. So they Mr. call me Mr. Elijah. So my question for you. Eli, mm -hmm. is what is your favorite Patrick Dempsey movie or TV show? You know, I'm gonna say something, uh, uh, Mister McDreamy. Come on, now. it's gonna it's gonna mm -hmm. sound a it's gonna sound a little uh, a little rude, but I, I'm gonna say it. I've been sitting here trying to rack my like when I was watching this movie, I was trying to rack my brain where else I saw him at, and I've seen him in like two episodes of Grey's Anatomy, and it was the worst, and I never watched any more of that. Uh, and I can't think of anything else I saw him in. And I'm sure if you tell me, I'm like, oh, yeah, he was probably terrible in that, too. Uh, I do not care for him. If he's a McDreamy, uh, I think more accurate would be called a McFucking Nightmare. Because <laughs> that guy's the worst. You know, he's a uh, professional race car driver as well. Uh, race in what? He drives for Team Porsche. Or no, Porsche. Yeah. And, I'm the, and I'm the Mole King. Whoopity fucking do. You know what I mean? I like some Patrick Dempsey movies. I think he's got oh, what, I'm trying to think. Him. What else has he been in? Can't Buy Me Love. He's been in... Uh, that's uh, that's when he was really young. So, again, yeah. telling my age there. He was in a Transformers movie. He was okay. in a Transformers movie. I quit watching that after like Transformers 11. Scream 3. Yep. Mm -hmm, three. Oh, that's right. They're he, trying to get him back now for the one that everybody has left, which is so I forgot. hilarious. We won't go on that tangent. But he like, was in Scream Three. I forgot. Yeah. Yep. You know He's what? Got though? A snark about him. Yeah. You. You know what? I feel like though the differences in Scream Three was that everybody else drowned him out. He was just kind of there. You know what I mean? He was there for the ride. Yeah. Fair enough. But like you know, he was in it. 
And to be fair, I think that's where he shines. And we haven't even started the movie review. Yeah, but we he have. shines in an ensemble cast. He's not a lead. No. He's, he's an ensemble kind of actor. Maybe. And I think if any film where it comes down to where he's a linchpin in the plot, fucking forget about it. I don't know. We're going to talk about it. I do know. But before we do that, we're going to let <laughs> our paranormal investigator Give us this week's installment update on all the different ways our world is burning to the ground around us in a little segment we call The Wicked Whispers. You know, I, I've been into this stuff ever since I was a kid. Uh, I have, I mean, well over 20 years of like actually reading books about like all this stuff. And like, if you would have asked teenage Eli, if what is happening today in, in this time would have happened, I'd say, I wish, but no, probably not. The fact that it's all happening simultaneously, my brain can't handle it. This week, there's so much stuff I could talk about that I narrowed it down to the big three, all having to do with aliens, because just what the shit? Uh, <laughs> there's been an increase in uh, U- UAP sightings, they call them now UFOs especially around nuclear power plants. A bunch of people are reporting it, which don't seem good. That don't seem good. Uh, just throwing that out there. Uh, but uh, as I talked to a few uh, Wicked Whispers back, the uh, guy in the Pentagon who was leading this, he retired and said, much as I can do with this, uh, as they were fighting with Congress, not releasing any information. Uh, the U.S. Congress, uh, which actually goes to vote on December 4th, um, which... Uh, I think this will come out of fact, whatever. But uh, Congress is like, well, since Pentagon's not going to tell us anything, we're going to make an amendment to force them to. And they had all this support. And then all of a sudden today, like four key uh, uh, representatives were like, I can't do this. And everybody's like, why? They're like, just can't do it. And so now, like, Congress is scrambling because they're like, what the fuck happened there? Uh, also, a former um, uh, former uh, CIA and other intelligence officials came forward and said they are concerned about all the leaks that's been occurring over the last year from the whistleblowers because they said so far nothing of consequence has been leaked but we're slowly circling that drain what do you mean of consequence what does that mean what what do you mean radio saw it don't say nothing and then what happened more leaks uh, it got leaked today that the CIA uh, has recovered over nine UAPs that have crashed around the world. Nine. The CIA has nine UFOs. At least. Nine. At least. That's not counting any other uh, uh, groups, intelligence groups, military, nothing. The CIA alone has nine of them. Why do they have so many that we know of? I'm just going to uh, assume they're mainly what weather balloons, though, right, John? I don't weather I don't, balloons. I don't, I don't, I don't Either that so. or like a Macy's Day Parade balloons. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, just pick a balloon. Some and of go us with still it. have PTSD from the parade. Let's just leave. <laughs> yeah. just leave. Uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie uh, Brown's uh, kite. That's a UAP. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think so. These are UFOs. And then, uh, and then you go to Mexico because a few weeks ago, you know, or. You know, about a month ago, they were like, hey, we have these two uh, alien mummies and like the U.S. and other governments and, and independent research center came forward. They're like, these aren't faked. And then now it's being leaked at, well, where they found them, there may have been other evidence that they haven't released yet. So, you know, and, but they keep bringing up these eggs uh, and they're like, we, you know, we're pretty sure they're petri- you know, petrified. We're still looking into it. What do you mean you're pretty sure? If you say I'm pretty sure about anything, that leaves room for doubt, like, oh, except for this one thing. What does that mean? What are you talking about? So, like, this has been going on in the States. You know, like, we're getting all these leaks. Uh, all these officials come forward, tell Congress they need to not pass this bill and that they need to, like, you know, get harder on these whistleblowers and stuff. This stuff doesn't get leaked out. That's not terrifying. And then the, the wrap things up here, that poor village in Peru. Those people have apparently been fighting They're aliens. They're still going. Listen, they've been fighting aliens at night anymore. for months. Or if you ask the proven government, they've been fighting miners and jetpacks. 
finally, uh, like, you know, they've been asking for help. And who answers the call? A bunch of dickheads who run their own podcast and like <laughs> shitty newspapers. They're the ones that Wait, go to we're track. down there. No, we're not there. Well, yeah, you guys down there. This is a class. No, if I was there, it'd be for action, uh-huh. not for you know whatever. <laughs> but uh, the true so, man like, of they're action, going down you know, there to interview, and like these people are like they're coming every night. It's a fucking bloodbath. We need help. Meanwhile, the proven government who's infiltrated the town now because they're helping them is like, nah, it's just Myers and jetpacks. And so then these all these people are like, well, can we stay and watch? And they're all like, and the government's like, no, you got to go. So they're not letting anybody see to see these things. And they're like, well, do you have any like evidence uh, from your fight to them? You need to go. That's all they're getting. <laughs> so like these people have been fighting a war, apparently, with aliens and jetpacks or miners with jetpacks, paying who you believe, for almost a year now. Begging for help. And who do they get? Every dick Tom and Harry who runs their own fucking basement site. And then, like, doesn't do nothing. They didn't even come down with, like, water and supplies. They brought their phone and extra battery pack. And they're like, watch me do the dab as I walk up to these uh, poor people. hey oh, I don't believe it. Yeah, we're all fucked. That's what it is. We're I all it. fucked. It's all, it's all lies. Eli's just lies. making this up now. Nope. Listen, you can, like, it's the point where, like, because all these assholes went, now there's all these TikToks. And, like, there's, like, one I saw this villager is like, we really need help. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you are you with the government? And they're like, no. He's like, we need help. Can you call somebody? They're like, oh no, I run a awesome. podcast out of my bedroom. That guy's like, a what? You do, you do what? <laughs> That's where we're at. That's where we're at, people. That's where we're at. So get your passport ready, Eli. Go show them how it's done. Oh yeah, no, listen, we need to, we need a in the field correspondent for the for the show in Peru. Listen, I then, would I would totally go. do this, but I'm going to have a list of items that I'm going to need. All right, uh, uh, so you heard he totally is going to do this. I will set up the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, we'll um, get the money together. But for, I, listen, there there are some key. And, there's key things. Well, I don't like to fly, so if I could, if I could be driven, that'd be great. Or a train, you want maybe somebody to drive you to Peru. I, I, I would prefer that. Yes, road trip, road trip to Peru. Because if you think Take about it, fifty two hours. Well, think about it. Right, what? How do you fly there in a plane? Where's a plane in the air? What's also in the air? Aliens with jetpacks. Oh, man. If I they can't know, even get I'm, into the logic if they know of, the mole king is if they coming and fly they can take care if of your they car know the too. mole king is coming do you don't think they're not gonna try to stop me i'm like the rambo of the paranormal world i'm Are a you? one-man army yeah <laughs> i'm armed with the real truth dave okay yeah fair enough the real truth what we are going to move into an actual movie review just to lighten the mood a little bit. Mm, yeah. So, and death and, is all around us, people. <laughs> and if you remember, it was our good friend Eli who gave the synopsis for our coverage of the Furies a couple of weeks ago. So, he's going to be the person that I pose a specific question to this week. So, Eli, my question for you this week to find out who has to give the on, on the fly synopsis is which of these themed kills? would you have added to this specific film? So a Thanksgiving themed kill. Okay. okay. Got three pitches to make to you. You tell me which one you would have added to this movie. First, you have what we're going to call the drunk uncle, which is an alcohol poisoning and indecent exposure public display of your victim. I love (laughs) the names of these. All right. All right. All right. (laughs) Then we have... The turducken, and I'm not Ooh. even really going to describe. I think we can all get. I like this of one. what okay. the turducken kill would have okay. been. Okay, okay, okay. Right. And then we have the OK Doomer, which is beating your victim to a bloody pulp with copies of the SAS Survival Handbook and Animal Farm. Nice, oh, man. I like this. Just, just off the top of the cap, those are. You know, I feel like if there's one I have to choose, I'm going to have to choose the one. That's gonna most likely end up being me after doing all these wicked whispers. And that'd be the drunk uncle. <laughs> At some point, I feel like I will be drunk over a Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, uh, looking at the people around me, and they're like, Oh, let's toast. And I'm like, fucking those are proves God. <laughs> they're like be crying. So I'm going with the drunk uncle. I'm going with drunk enough. uncle. Well, if somebody's gonna pull off a drunk uncle kill, it's my boy John. I of course. Him. So John. Tell us about 2023's Thanksgiving. Oh, man. 
it's amazing that we haven't had another movie by this title in this many years. It's kind of shocking at this point. But um, so Thanksgiving in uh, the lovely city of Plymouth, Mass. Is that right? Plymouth, I know Hanover, yeah. mm-hmm. Plymouth. Okay. Yeah. So Plymouth, Mass. We got to experience some real mass holes um, <laughs> in this movie, which I, I really enjoyed in true Eli Roth fashion. But so anyways, Black Friday shenanigans as eli would say occur and due to those black friday shenanigans people get stomped slaughtered and and die in some wonderful ways in a uh, local shopping establishment and due to that we have john carver coming to carve up the lovely residents of plymouth mass that he feels caused all the mayhem and then we have wonderful not a very, I would say, obvious twists at the end, but some interesting reveals. But pretty standard slasher fare here. It's sure nothing, is. nothing. Yeah, that's, that's the plot. <laughs> yeah, that is that is it. Slash a slash fest of plenty. Yep. Some actual in- interesting, um, like kind of modern technology kind of workarounds. I thought, but mm-hmm. other than that pretty standard fare. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, Jamie, I'm going to let you jump off. This is our first, uh, well, actually, no, this is our second in theater watch for 2023. Mm -hmm. So tell us what you thought of Thanksgiving. So um, when I left the movie, I'm going to use the literal words that came out of my mouth when I asked what I thought. Um, I thought it was true. I'm sticking with, I thought it was cute. Mm -hmm. Like, so, and in that, I mean, well, you like, like, so we're all horror fans. Like that's primarily Mm -hmm. what I watch. So what I mean is like, was it bad? No. Do I love it? No. I thought it was cute. Like for a heart, like, so it's, is it worth a theater watch? Now I'm someone who doesn't like to go to theaters. I think we know, like I've said that before. So was it worth a theater watch for me? Not necessarily. Also, um, you know. My friends here know, like, this is the worst time of year for me for like work. I'm so overworked. I'm so busy. Like, I got personal stuff. Like, so going to a theater just felt like a little bit like, oh, I don't really want to go. So I think that also contribute, you know, trying to fit it in, like, like just a theater watch in general. Um, if this was like streaming. Uh, I've also been really sick. So I went like really sick, which like doesn't help sitting in like a theater. But like um streaming probably would have been a little bit more enjoyable, but like. It's not like I didn't like it. I, I just it's it's a slasher, like John said. Like it is through and through, just like a slasher, where the plot is mildly ridiculous, just like they are in like when you think of classic slashers. Like when you get to the reveal or the motivation, it's like really, but it's a really with like oh wait, all slashers are kind of like that with the with the motivation. Like it's just a, a silly point. Um, it had some it had some good kills. I'm sure we're going to discuss that. It is so Eli Roth. Like the moment the dialogue starts, I was like, oh, that's right. This is an Eli Roth movie. There he is. And yeah. And it's literally like two sentences. It might even be the first <laughs> sentence. You're like, oh, fuck, this is an Eli Roth movie. And it like does not let up in in that. So I, I don't even think there's much for me to say. It's no um, I know everyone is no cabin fever to me. It's no hostile. I think those are way better than this. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I'm i going to make a dumb statement. I'm just trying to say, but like the last time we've gotten like a true kind of just like masked slasher in a while, I, I like it, 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 it sticks in that that vein. Um, we will discuss plot points, which I'm not going to bring up now on why it's this or the other. So I like that's why I just say it's cute. I think it's a modern attempt at a slasher for him to make something. He chose a holiday, ran with it. Now we have another Thanksgiving movie, I guess, to throw throw mm-hmm. on. Um yeah, I, I that's I don't really have much to say about my overall thoughts. I want to like we could talk about some plot points because I do want to ask some questions about yeah. some of the weird things going on there. And but um, like overall, I think it was it was just it was like fine. It was not offensive, and it was not. I'm not running out to watch it again. But you know, yeah, yeah. I think that's all. It's cute. Points and probably something it's you're cute. Hear. Yeah. It's a cute. <laughs> yeah, the stakes were low. And yeah, it's <laughs> all right. Uh, he's got his curmudgeon face on already. <laughs> I'm watching YouTube, but I'm going to let Eli yeah, bring yeah, his yeah. counterpoint of passionate rage at how dare this movie be whatever, whatever the cute. how dare it be cute? Yeah. Oh, whatever listen. his righteous indentation. Oh, listen, listen, this movie. <laughs> this this wasn't an antlers. Okay, it wasn't an antlers. Uh, 
I, you know, I, I was real excited to watch this because when I saw the trailer, it remind like I, I love slashers. They're some of my favorite. Uh, it reminded me like a 70s, 80s slasher. It felt like it had that for the trailer, it had that campiness. It reminded me of like, not like the big three, but like there was all these slashers, like the 70s, 80s, where like the costume, the killer was just like, you know, a little bit ridiculous. And like, it's this guy wearing a giant pilgrim's hat uh, and a mask and a sweater. Like, I was like, mm-hmm. well, okay, you know. Um, Went in the theater, had my got my popcorn and my and my Fanta. Life was good. <laughs> Until this movie started. I oh, this was Sorry. this was I, I did not care for this. I didn't um, watch any trailers either. So were the trailers misleading? I just want to know no. before you go. Or, or you I, th- I, more. see I no. well listen, I I didn't watch anything me, to do with it. They were they were misleading because like I I wish I saw the movie that the trailers, the trailers yeah i need and like say not okay. what i actually saw because like i like <laughs> in terms of kills like there was really only one interesting kill i thought was good what? the rest of them were just like mm. fine yeah i mean honestly like i and especially for like a thanksgiving theme movie like there was only two kills i can think of uh, that actually had really anything to do with thanksgiving Oh, yeah, just um, one or two. Yeah, that had to do with Thanksgiving, uh, sure. But I mean, but like, yeah, but like, if you're gonna do this where like it's a Thanksgiving themed slasher movie, like I would have thought. Like, I don't even count. Like, at one point, I know he stabs corn cob spikes in people's ears, but like, well, okay, like whatever. But like, I, 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 my favorite kill was the one the lady in the diner, just because oh, of how, That's yeah, right. how quick and like with the like the sink and like the free, like that was it was that was just that was dope. Even though like the whole dumpster mechanic, uh. Did it make sense because the plastic oh, it's lid? Awesome though. Yeah, I thought, yeah, don't get me wrong. I liked it, but I'm like, that it must be one hell of a plastic lid. Uh, <laughs> but like then from there, like the kills got boring. And then he got to the point where, like, for an Eli Roth movie, like, especially if you think like Cabin Fever, where like, granted, Cabin Fever did not have as many kills, but like what it did have with like granted with its budget, like it like that shaving scene was fucking oh please that lives with me forever <laughs> then you have like with your hostel <laughs> films like those kills or whatever and like in this one like it like you know what this movie like the best way to describe this movie it felt like eli roth was trying to remember how to be eli roth and like i felt like he was trying to do at times it felt like he was trying to do his version of scream but not very good uh and then because it was trying to play up that who done it angle like kind of with the cast the teens i thought like normally like was a lot of these slashers have like unforgettable teens but there's normally like one or two where like i don't remember any of their names i didn't care about any of them like they were all like kind of boring uh i couldn't i don't know if i looked at a lineup of them now i could tell you all of who they were within the movie because like they're just like whoever um and then like at the ending like when i thought i got to a point i'm like oh wait now this is where to ramp up the kills like this is gonna be good and not really and then like he kind of takes care of all that off screen and like a really bland, boring way for a kind of bland, boring ending. So like, I, it's it just weird. Like I, it felt like he was trying to do something like he was trying to be like, Oh, and Eli, this is the first movie I think he's directed and not just produced since green Inferno. I think maybe it's been a while. Or, like. no, that, I don't or, know. House well, with a clock in the walls. That's true. Oh, I didn't that, see that. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that hot garbage. And then there was that, uh, what was that earthquake movie he did? I can't remember if he did that before or after green Inferno. Uh, that one that like that earthquake in Argentina or whatever. I, I think it's called Quake right or Earthquake or something. He, his direct um, But like I know, like but like I haven't in all honesty, I haven't really enjoyed his movies since Director. uh after Hostel. Um, and like this one, it felt like he was trying to do like his style of film again. He's kind of gone away from and like just fell flat. Like it was felt like he was just like wow, because like he would start all these weird plot points and then just like. Nah, whatever fuck it and then just go on to the next thing so like i know we're gonna get into it i don't want to get spoiler but like this was just like like i i like i i and like it also didn't help when i was in theaters there was this this couple in front of me and it was they're like one of those weird couples where the the husband and wife look exactly the same uh, <laughs> like and they were dressed like and at first i thought maybe like their brother and sister and then they kissed i'm like well i'm not west virginia anymore so i'm assuming they're husband and wife uh or whatever but like they were <laughs> laughing at every line even if a line wasn't funny oh they i had a guy next to me explaining everything but when i say explaining Ooh, i mean doing the thing fun. where he just repeats exactly what happened mm-hmm. like well like, then there was a guy sitting next to them who was below me who like every time they would laugh at a line that wasn't funny he would look at them 
with <laughs> murder in his eye. And I'm like, that's going to be a cooler kill than what I've seen this movie so far. And then it gets this point and like other people were looking at them because it wasn't just like a, ha, ha, ha. it was, it was like, you would think they were out like watching a standup routine. And then at the ending, the killer says the tagline from the movie, which is the lamest fucking scene in the movie. This Thanksgiving, there's going to be no more leftovers. And we all looked at these people who were like, they're going to fucking and fucking silent. They said nothing. And we, I think that made us all angrier than them laughing throughout the whole movie to this like boring fucking movie. So like, I, I didn't care for it. I, I, if I never watch again, I'll be fine. It sounds like that couple just realized that the people around them, as we've talked about before on other episodes, just hate fun. Don't like fun. I knew you were going to well, say Well, if we had been watching a fun movie, uh, I'd probably agree with you, but there, there was very little fun to be had in this. Interesting. There's one scene, that parade scene also made me, that, I, I tell you what, I did, almost get antler level furious and no. it was during the fucking parade scene because it's i know what you did last summer well no well it's because it is by the way well, that, it's but like, like it's the <laughs> fact that they're trying to like they're like looking for this guy and you're in a thanksgiving parade and there's one guy wearing a halloween clown outfit <laughs> carrying an axe and no one's like well let's check him isn't it like killer clown from outer space level mask well, well, well like, yeah except for it's got like demon it had like demon it's mix of that and art yeah. yeah and like, like no one like everybody's like looking for something weird and different looking for john carver well but for. i feel like if you are it was once again to your point that's a trope you've seen a lot of horror movies but like yeah. i've never seen it handled so bad where it's like he wasn't dressed like a turkey he wasn't dressed like someone in the band or like anyway he was wearing a halloween outfit everybody's just like oh that guy can act fine it's whatever that was the point. No, it was stupid. <laughs> it is stupid. All right. All right, John. Stupid. Oh man. I, I you know what? There's there's a combination of two things here that I think impacted Eli's experience, but I'm not gonna speak for Eli. I'm just gonna say I've been in Eli's shoes before. I've seen a trailer. I'm like, dude, this movie's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. Get really excited for it. Go to the movies sit down i get my snacks and i'm like this is gonna be great and then like tweedledee and tweedledum and all the other tweedle fucks sit down and decide to ruin the whole thing by like they just they just talk they do stupid stuff they interfere with your just watching of the movie this time i went on a tuesday night surprising the theater was like minimum half full, might even been three quarters full. I could not believe how many people were in the theater for this movie after Thanksgiving. This was yesterday when I saw it. Everyone was well behaved. The most offensive thing in the in the theater experience were the uh, young folk wearing way too much cologne and perfume <laughs> that, that almost made me gag and ruin my popcorn until I acclimated to the smell. They had their acts going on. Dude, it was it was it was something special. I don't know if they like accidentally broke the bottle, but it was like two different people and they were on my left and my right. So I had bad smell in stereo. Ooh, so, it, yeah, if, if you, dude, it was it was pretty it was pretty rough. I'm sure it smelled good in moderation. But anyways, <laughs> other than that, it was the most well-behaved crowd I've been in a movie theater in years. Like everybody laughed at the punny lines right when you're supposed to. Everybody laughed at the ridiculous kills right when you're supposed to. Nobody was talking. Nobody was explaining stuff. It was, I, again, I was shocked. I usually have the worst movie experiences. What The way Eli and Jamie described, that is like a good time for me. Usually it's way worse than both of those descriptions. I'm not the person to go to the movies with. I attract terrible people. Anyways... <laughs> I I don't I must have been in a good mood or just in the right mood. I really enjoyed this movie. Like Jamie said, nothing special. It's pretty standard. It's pretty expected. But I was up for it in the Eli Roth dialogue. I'm like, you know what? I haven't seen like this mean, snarky, kind of like shitty character dialogue in a while. And it just kind of hit right. I'm like, yeah, this is like... Thanksgiving is supposed to be nice, sweet, and wholesome, and these people are pieces of shit. Does, does Eli Roth? I don't mean to, but I like because you said does Eli Roth like his characters ever? No, you he know hates them. No, right? He he, hate, like, he almost always hates his. Yeah, he wants permission to do terrible things to them. <laughs> yeah, like Green movie. Inferno. I probably one of a handful of people that enjoy that movie. I like the way he treats those idiot like 
kids. Oh, I love that movie. Like hostile. It's, like the character, the main characters are oh, unlikable. Like intentionally. Just because, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So anyway, sorry. Yeah, but so that's oh, like yeah. that's yeah, it's to because what you were saying, like Eli Roth yeah. dialogue and Eli oh. Roth characters are like, yeah. Oh, and then the cheerleader in the Hanover douchebag. <laughs> oh my gosh, those guys. Mm, chef's kiss so freaking good i cannot wait till they died and did we ever get a good kill off the trampoline it was so good <laughs> and he killed the dude with the turkey costume everybody wants to do that come on yeah like like i mean it's this is literally it literally does everything that you expect it to do and it just is and it's just dumb i it's it's not it's you know, and Patrick Dempsey as a killer, I can get behind it, except I want it to be ratcheted up to a spoiler level. alert. Yeah. We didn't give a spoiler warning. Guy. Oh, no. <laughs> spoiler warning for the slasher where it's pretty much given away in the trailer. I think, yeah. I think everybody. You mean I, didn't watch, I didn't watch the trailer. You mean like, his I, first you know. line in the movie? I was like, there he is. Yeah, first the only line. named actor that we would recognize. <laughs> yes. The all oh, the pun the puns. Oh, the one guy who plays the dad who owns the store. He's had oh a my good, God. he's had a run on a couple different shows. I think oh, that guy is, and uh, something suits. else. He was, he was on suits. Suit. There you go. In suits. He's, he's been in a bunch of movies. He's they just got, got the most punchable face on yeah, the planet. He does. And as he gets yeah. older, it gets worse. Have you noticed mm-hmm. that? <laughs> like he's like aging into a more punchable face, which is not something you see very often. No, and that's isn't. no that's no offense at all to uh, what's his name. I've got it here. Uh, Punch you make punch my face, Rick Hoffman. Mm-hmm. I, I don't mean any offense, Rick, but just I have a visceral reaction yeah, when I he see knows. So that's the thing is oh, they cast him for it. yeah he, yeah they, they cast, cast him for it. it. I mean yeah <laughs> oh but but no I this movie I was I was totally up for it and I was just like this is this is just hitting that that sweet spot for me at that moment. I also had the trailer for uh Silent Night coming up looking yeah. forward to that one. And just I mean I did not have that trailer. I didn't have I had like I think one horror and it was that stupid one with the water that I've seen twice now. Oh really? Did you, you didn't uh, have the imaginary the cool friend one. trailer? No, I didn't have imaginary that one friend. Uh, uh, Blumhouse's new movie, Imaginary. No, that looks like it's going to be hot so. monkey shit. Blumhouse is starting to lose a lot. I don't know, and and that pool one, I don't even know what it's called, but it's the pool. Yeah, uh, Night yeah. Swim. I yeah, the, Night Swim. Yeah, that one is the second that, time I've seen that goddamn trailer. Yeah, yeah, I had that and Imaginary. Those are my two. There's a two horror trailers I had. I had. I don't think I had that. Hmm. Anyway, but yeah, Dave, I'm I'm I, I enjoyed myself. I'm interested to hear what you have to say, though. Well, uh, the good news is I had a very similar experience to you, John. And, you know, and I didn't know I needed it, but I apparently, um, and I did just for all the background, I did the Friday after Thanksgiving when there's nothing going on. I wasn't going shopping, hell to the Nile. Mm-hmm. So I ended up at the theater at the 615 showing on a Friday night. Oh, yeah. And, and I was the only person in this theater. Wow, that's like, shocking. I, I got, it's like it got prime uptake. movie time. Yeah, and I thought yeah. after Thanksgiving it got a little because I saw it on the Sunday after. And that worried me. I'm like, pretty, yeah. is it that bad? But <laughs> I, I literally had a private showing of Thanksgiving. That's in great. My favorite theater with my cherry Coke Zero. Oh food, hell yes! And my popcorn yep. and yep. my Twizzlers, and I, I had a blast. And when I started trying to, because I did see it. Well, that would have been five days ago. So I was worried I was going to, because a lot of this movie is forgettable. I'll be the yeah. first to admit oh. that. I knew I was going to lose this movie in my brain because it just kind of washes over you. But my, I was proud. I, I my one word uh, or my one sentence description of this movie is that this movie is a good cheeseburger. And oh, I yes, hope my vegetarian is. friend will bear with me for a minute. <laughs> I mean, it is it is a well crafted cheeseburger, and it's not trying to be anything else. It's an American classic, just like a teen slasher. Now, all of the teen slashers and slasher evolutions of the of the twenties is it's a cheeseburger with pimento cheese on it. Or it's a cheeseburger with pulled pork on it. Or it's a cheeseburger with mac and cheese peppers or mac, mac and cheese. Or this is a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> well made cheeseburger. And it's unapologetic about what it is. Um, but that's what I that's the best way I could describe this movie. It's not doing anything groundbreaking. It's not trying to do anything groundbreaking. 
to the fact of this is move this is a movie directly named after a holiday just like halloween and the friggin opening scene is the halloween opening scene it's the pov shot of going to the front door it's almost frame by frame the exact same shot as halloween unapologetic about that it's a cheeseburger it's not trying to pretend to be something of the killer too dave yeah exactly the, the, the twist you just don't see coming right yeah and that he 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 disappears into the fire at the end that's halloween oh <laughs> yeah. this movie do you think we're gonna get a sequel dave i hope oh, not we're gonna talk about that but it's, yeah but something i haven't heard any of y'all mention and and i'm curious are you all familiar of where this came from no Yes, kind of. Okay. But I didn't mention because I, I didn't read into it. I heard. Okay. So please explain to the audience that does that if they don't know. But yeah. Yeah. If, I don't know if you remember. And it's almost 20 years old, which blows. Yeah, my that's mind. the whole point. 2007 yeah, yeah. when Grindhouse came out, which was the was the big production double feature mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they put together with uh, Tarantino and Planet Rod- Terror. And, um, and, yeah, it was Planet Terror and Death Proof. Death well, if awesome. you remember, they had a bunch of like their friend directors do trailers to go between the double yes. features. This movie was one of those trailers, just like Machete, which became a, a, I a do, throw don't off. I remember that one. You, you can go look it up on YouTube, but there's the original kind of Thanksgiving uh, huh. trailer. And it's literally almost frame by frame, that whole parade scene down mm-hmm. to the chopping the turkey mascot's head off and all of that. So that, that's where this came from. If you didn't know that, that's kind of, why we got this is he finally came back to it and we're going to talk more about that in a minute but i really enjoyed uh how basic it was it wasn't it wasn't a big ask from me i could sit there and chuckle and get excited when somebody gets frozen to the side of a freezer a deep freeze and <laughs> peeling their skin off and listening to some god awful teens just say some of the dumbest stuff on the planet and just wait with giddy anticipation for each of their deaths it was it didn't have a big social uh commentary that it was trying to get over it, it had no pimento cheese or mac and cheese on it jamie it was just a cheeseburger, That's cheeseburger. Uh, but there were in my opinion um there were some really creative kills in this like and i think you all mentioned that first one where she gets oh god it's chopped so in half it's so fast and you're like oh, oh it's so <laughs> this is the kind of movie this is going to be and not yes. only did he get she get chopped in half but then she gets spiked on the <laughs> store side. i'm like okay yeah dave it was 50 percent off yeah <laughs> we were we knew at that point we were in an eli roth movie like he was yeah. making that and and all of us can remember and and probably a lot of our audience can there was an era and uh e- Eli you mentioned the 70s and 80s mm-hmm. slashers this reminds me more of the 90s and early aught slashers those teen slashers that were all trying to be screamed like uh I know what you did last summer and uh what was the other big one um uh, shoot uh, the faculty all of those kind of key faculty, so we, it was a formula that we were just pushing through. And this was Eli make, I felt like he was making homage and I actually looked up an article um, because obviously he made that death proof Thanksgiving, never assuming he'd ever make that movie, just making something that would be goofy, kind of like Machete was too. Uh, But then when he got to making this movie, the concept he built for himself of the history or the legacy or legend behind this movie was this isn't that movie. That movie was so raw and awful, a grindhouse movie that all the prints were destroyed and all the actors disappeared because it had such a, a horrible reputation. And then there was this actor who got it and remade it. So this is like the modern remake of a movie that didn't oh. exist from like the, the seventies, um, which I think is a fun way to go. The the teen uh, main cast, if you want to call them that, they they they're totally obtuse. Like they are just unbearably annoying. Um, but again, it's a teen slasher, it, and that's what uh, to the point you made, Jamie. That that's what Eli Roth does with his his victims. Like he he wants permission to do things that you wouldn't be okay with him doing if it was a final girl situation. Like if you had somebody that you were following along with and he did some mean spirited stuff to him, it's harder, but he wants you to hate them as much as he needs you to, to do some of the stuff he's going to do. Uh, So yeah, they, they were awful. Were they boring? Did they say stupid stuff? Yeah. Yeah. They were awful people. Uh, (laughs) And, 
and again, it's a cheeseburger. Um, this movie does not apologize for saying, yeah, this is a money grab. There's not any good Thanksgiving movies. Huh. All of you Halloween people who are complaining that everybody's talking about Christmas. Yeah, here's, here's one your- more shot <laughs> for you. <laughs> We're going to take like, your money. Everything you're saying to you about the cheeseburger kind of equates to my cute. I'm not trying yeah. to say like, but that's yeah. what I mean when I say like, it's not being anything beyond nope. it's cute for yeah. a horror movie. It tried yeah. to, it's like doing its thing. And like, you know, I, I mean, yeah. I, what I'm saying is I agree with you. I mean, maybe I didn't like love it or anything, but like, I agree. Like, I doubt I like that. It's just doing its thing. Yeah. Just yeah. is. Yeah, it's not it's not a, a handcrafted sushi. It's not even a nice bowl of pho. No, no. It's it is a just slasher. a cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> Although the lead reminded the me that. too much of the lead of the new Screams, who I also don't I'm not uh, a huge okay. fan of, right? I don't know. There was something about their acting that was so very similar. Well, and it's that it's not very it good. It's that it's not very good. Well, I think it's the same it's I always had the same complaint. And not Jen Ortega, the other one, right. Melissa Barrett, whatever her name is. I uh, I had the same compl- I almost have like the same complaint with um this is I do scream where you're like your core group, like there's nothing because like I agree like Eli Roth normally and like he makes you hate the characters and you do these things, which he did a lot with the side characters. He didn't really do anything with the main cast, and then like you only kill two of them, uh, and like both their deaths were just like whatever, and like it's and like the, it was the same thing with Scream where like the original Scream cast and even in, like some of the sequels like. Even if good, bad, but you remember who most of them were. Mm. Uh, where like the new scream, like the new group was like whatever. Like I, I once again, I, those new scream movies, I couldn't tell you. I like I know Jenna Ortega because she's in everything, and like the other girl, uh, because I think this whole thing they did with uh, Billy was the dumbest thing on the planet. I remember those <laughs> two. I don't really remember the other ones. And I, I probably couldn't pick them out of a lineup. And like that's how I was with this because like like I said, it felt like. Uh, like I get, I get your your thing. I see you're saying, Dave. My problem was like it was like, okay, I'm expecting that Roth make me a cheeseburger. He brought me Mickey D's and said, "Well, this is what I would have done if I made it myself." But you can just eat this McDonald's and shut the fuck up. And it's like, okay, cool. And I think Sorry, I, think I that, didn't mean to go on a tangent on no. the characters, Dave. If you weren't, I didn't mean to. I just no, like you were I, was, you were talking about them, so I just wanted to say that she right, reminded yeah. me. Like, but like. Yeah, that was but, my overall thoughts. I didn't have anything else to add. But to to the point you that you're making, Eli, I think this is very much a handmade Eli Roth cheeseburger. It's very Eli Roth. Oh, that looked the ghost of Eli Roth. I don't know. It's. I mean, when is? I'm not even trying to. So we just. So again, you said about when was the last time he he directed something and whatever. Mm. But like, I, I, yes, I said I like Hostel better. I like Cabin Fever better. But they're mm-hmm. still very similar to this movie. I don't think that this is any off track of Eli Roth. Like it's just I mean, I've like, seen them more. Maybe if I've seen this more over years, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think like uh, this. But just it's not like, like those uh, movies are genius or anything. No, no. And, and that, so I'm not saying that like but Eli Roth, like when he first started like his learners movies to me, it's kind of very punk rock. Like the what he did with like the gore and like the kills, like even if it was a not necessarily a brutal kill, but it was done in a way that just the situation was brutal. We're like this, like to me, like a lot of the kills uh, were either lackluster or he would like start to set it up. Like something fun was going to happen, but then just, you don't get to see that. And, it, and we're not going to, we're not going to finish looking at. I mean, uh, I do agree that he wasted a lot of the teens. Like we had yes. too many of them that didn't die. Like for, right. to be fair, like leave just the chick whose right. dad owns the store, but all these other friends should have well, died. Got, and too many of them lived for, for right. them to be and pointless. Like, like they were kind of pointless. table scene, like the yeah, way they all it was should have died. They up, all should have died. I was so excited. I was like, oh, I was like, here it is. Like this feast is what I want. And like, they did that thing with the hammer. I'm like, this, and like, then like, I'm like, ooh, this was the opener. This was the appetizer. Yeah, that guy. Then yeah. they're going to like that turkey thing. I'm like, oh man, this is it. Yeah, the dad didn't it, even die. Well, then mm, it, it doesn't even yeah. show you do what you thought he was going to do. And then she runs out. And then at the end of the movie, they're like, oh, everybody got out of the house. Yeah, everybody's in the hospital. It's all yeah, fine. Everybody's, everybody's it's okay. all fine. And you're like, and, and like, I missed that, which I like, that is what I'm here for. Like this, like this feels like an Eli Ross thing. Like, oh man, this is going to be good to this weird stupid twist reveal that wasn't really a reveal for anybody and like this the most boring chase scene I ever saw in my life at the end uh it felt more like a transformers movie at one point because like i think i've seen that bit where the transformer can't drive away because 
Patrick Dempsey can do a lasso with a steel cable. Like it's like it was the most absurd. Like, it's just absurd. Like I so they, I think that's what I mean when I say like like I just if the points it felt like he was going to be him. That was and then we just. We that just, last scene was waste wasted. a lot of it. Yeah. And I remember thinking that in the theater because like the yeah. fact that they all of a sudden everybody's in the hospital. Well, not only that. So first of all, that was weird that they're just like everybody's mm-hmm. in the hospital. But even that we ran yeah. out of there without killing more than one person at a right. table full of people. And even if if they if he would have if that would have been his like crescendo, like that's what like there this is where he his playground. I could have been like that the rest of the movie, like it, it, it was all a path to this point. And like we got this point, it was like he got gun shy and didn't want to pull a trigger. Or maybe it was budget or whatever the reason. And then we we walk away and go into what is like, okay. And I'll, we left all that on the table. I'll defend the decision he made at the table. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll just say as far as the table, and I agree, you know, they set up that that was going to be the big crescendo. The problem I would have with that is. The formula of a teen slasher is the chase. It's the it's the cat and mouse. If I sat in that table and slowly watched the carver just brutalize, torture, and kill each of the people at that, oh, uh, I'm going to finish. S- Thank you. Uh, but uh, if if we sat there and watched him torture and kill, then it becomes an Eli Roth hostel and not a slasher anymore. It becomes a torture porn. And I think that would have totally killed any of the momentum he'd build up to that point with the chase. So that's why, and I think that was a decision he made. And I would, I would agree with the decision for the formula of the kind of movie he was making. Well, I, I'm not saying wipe them all out the table scene, but like that table scene was something that could have like uh, almost like Texas Chainsaw Massacre had that same thing where they, mm-hmm. where they took that table scene where it should go. And then you had your chase and your chase mattered that much more. I think Where, more happened at this table scene than happened in Texas Chainsaw. Well, nothing happens in Texas Chainsaw. Exactly. But, like, well, really. but it, it's more like the horror around them. We're like this, like you had like the dinner and like he hit someone with a hammer, but then like, then you watch her use her inspector gadget ring and uh, which cuts a one inch rope, which I'll still never understand. Uh, and like, then like you kind of have this really lackluster chase scene that turns into a smaller lackluster chase scene. So like, if you're not going to push he the roasted me, the mother, I, I was going to say, yeah, yeah, it was, no, yeah. it was, there was a lot of horrific things. And then no, like, her at well, the table with her that, head off, which you've seen people get roasted live for, but that whole thing about serving her up like a turkey, yeah, that's happened <laughs> other movies, yeah, it yeah. Has, but but that serving up like a turkey, that was the that was the money ticket, but we we didn't finish that, like, jam that in his face, kill the dad, kill one more team, then we have her chasing. Okay, now I'm okay, now I'm feeling good. Not, yeah, but if I'm, going to do a, if I'm going to do a satisfying kill of the dad and after I've already roasted the mom and then kill one of the other teens, that's like 15 minutes of just sitting there and watching people get brutalized. That's I a guess different there's movie. An in-between. Yeah, there's an in-between. Yeah. I, get what, I get what Dave's saying, too. I get it. I get it. There is an in-between. I th- I think I personally think because I, I see I, I, I see both sides. Personally, I, I do agree with Eli to a degree that I think too many people got off in that scene, like scot free, like too many, right. like one more. Give me just give me. I, I get it. I get that they grilled the mom alive or whatever. But like, I don't know. They Like he said, they didn't even play with that enough. Like she got put there and then he kind of threw. Honestly, I sat there saying, why is nobody throwing up at this scene? Because and then the dad finally gagged. But like right. they were given a lot of horrific things right in front of them. Mm-hmm. And they all sit there stone cold like they're like fine with this. Like the guy gets his head bashed in in front of them, literally brains leaking out onto the table. And they're all like, Meh. the mom is roasted and he starts to cut her. And I think part of it, I know we've all watched a lot. And as horror fans, we've watched a lot. But sometimes the reaction, like their reactions did not help me feel like this is a gruesome event if that makes sense because they were all just like okay so i guess i needed like another one because like they didn't seem to be reacting to any of the things that were happening in front of them so it's like maybe maybe that other girl or the other the other friend like i don't even know their names i will be honest i have no clue what anybody's (laughs) name is i think the one that died is evan maybe or i'm making that up i feel like there was an evan in there i could be making that Uh, are you thinking are you gonna confuse the oven yeah, Evan, Evan. I know there's a Bobby, right? Her ex boyfriend's Bobby, I think. Yeah, Bobby is um, the pitcher. He's the the red herring. That's not that you know is not the killer. Right. Um, but like, um, but I wait. While we're still on that scene, I guess because that's like 
part of the beginning of like the exposition and the explanation and the motive to a degree because it's it's leading into the the reveal but like I know slashers have the dumbest reveals. I said that earlier, so I'm not trying to pick on it. But the friends kind of had nothing to do with this. Like, in a way, like one recorded it. You want to put him out there, fine. But like, but they were hiding. And like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it, the mm-hmm. opening scene is creative, a little too long, like to get there, like a little Agreed. too long leading into the massacre, kind of like yeah. really too much of that outside just cursing at each other and telling everybody to fuck off, mm-hmm. which was funny and then got too much. Like, yeah. but, um, like, okay. So the security guard got his, but like, really like it, it should have been more aimed at store people. And like, I don't know. There was just the, the picking of high school students was a very weird, especially moment. like the, the daughter. Friend, friend. It's, it's a small town vibe. And like the daughter's dad owns a store. And for anybody to be like, what well, that's weird that she's in there when it's not open yet. Like I grew up in a small town that yeah, the guy I worked for had a store. Yeah. The kids were in it all the time when you couldn't get in. But it. Like, literally, it that other girl who I think is an influencer in real life, like she's hiding the whole time. Like what? Like what did mm. she really do? Right. Like the motivation is just so odd to me Your that you pick these random high school Jamie. students. Like, mm. like again, the the security guard makes sense. The yep. woman who ran over the woman and killed her that makes sense. Mm. Like I wanted someone who I guess the first people to trample the guy that makes sense. But then you pick these random high school students. It was like, just because they're, I don't know. It was just, I get it again. Motive for a slasher is never right. And like his, we didn't even get to his motive, which was the silliest reveal like of all time, but that's a slasher for you. They're always fucking silly. I got, I did get excited when I saw Gina Gershon and I knew she was going to play some pivotal role. What about when her brain, her little piece of her like scalp scalps off? off. Oh yeah. (laughs) That reminded me of the uh, motorboat scene. Yes, and, yes, uh, it did. And it's such a dumb way, too. It's like on a fucking car. I mean, yeah. that scene is funny. It mm-hmm. is. But like, it took way too long to get there. I was just waiting for it because you know what's going to happen. Like, you mm-hmm. know, this is what it's setting up. You could just tell. Yeah. And it just took so goddamn long to like to get there. To get there. But, mm-hmm. you know, I get it. I get it. I get even his motivation behind it. And I see it setting everything up. And it's like one of those, like you see the dominoes, you see everything falling into place and this mm-hmm. person doing this and the girl giving the finger. Like, it's funny. It's like, I get it. And they all get there, you know, but like, yeah. I don't know. And that leads me to a question I have for you all, because I have my own opinion on this, but he's making, in my opinion, he's making a classic version, a cheeseburger of the... 90s early aughts that teen slasher formula so he's got the this group of teens and and the dialogue and all that but um as i'm listening to these teens interact they seem so out of place in in 2023 like they they are obviously written by an old guy who has not been around teens in a long time (laughs) but my question is is that an intentional commentary on he's trying to it's actually a period piece and he's ref, he's being referential to those kinds of characters that you need in a teen slasher kind of movie. I don't think so. Cause I think giving him too much credit. Yeah. I think, I think if, if, he, if he's making that kind of decisions uh, and, and to, to do that, um, then I, I think there'd be a lot of other different decisions made because it, it like, it just didn't seem like he knew what to do with them. It, like, it seemed like he kind of wanted to make this like uh, almost like you can tell there's a lot of influences of other horror flicks throughout there. Like, I mean, like a lot of the kills are reminiscent of various kills you've seen, the shots um, that you see. Like, I know, Dave, you said Halloween. I thought that opening shot he was doing Friday the 13th because that house looked like uh, Annie's house in the second Friday the 13th when they do the oh, yeah. point of view shot. Um, like it looked like the front looked like her house, you know. So it well, like, literally had the breathing through the mask sound, just like well, at Halloween, yeah. right? Well, like, yeah, Friday Thirteenth had it too because he was in his burlap sack, but only it was like it sounded poopier. Uh, but like it's uh, and so like I and I think he was concentrating more on that because you see that in various places where he like does things, like even like some of the kills, like that kill with the dumpster lid, I, I, like the, even the way the legs were dangling, I was like, oh, that's what's her nuts and scream. Like, oh, you're doing that. That leg sitting up on something. I can't remember the movie, but there was one where they cut somebody in half, put his ass on a flagpole with just his legs. Like, I thought they were doing that. Like, so, like, everything's from Oh, my God, that is something. What yeah. is it? Oh. I can't remember the movie off the top of my head, but, like, it feels like 
he was so constantly like doing all these like kind of callbacks. Urban and, legend. Yeah. And Is like, it? And like even felt like the way he was trying to set up the town and how the locals interacted, it almost felt like he was calling out Stephen King, like I don't know, because it felt like a Stephen King type uh, where everybody like, knows each other. Yeah, yeah and like, like uh, but yeah, everybody's shitty, but they're just like that's yeah. them. And like that he didn't got to point where he's like when it came time to do stuff with characters, he didn't know what to do with his main set of characters. Which if you look, most of the kills are not the core group. Uh, only two people die in the core group of those uh, main characters of the main characters so like because you're would, building a franchise eli you can, yeah but like you can if, if he's like doing the formula like you can get rid of three fourths them like and carry them through that's what all the 90s did or like the to your point like nines and stuff like you didn't do and then like even your core people they didn't even have the the more interesting kills the two that did get killed they had the and i would argue he actually didn't kill the one because when she fell on that saw blade it cuts her fingers off and she pushes herself up and then she's just like oh fuck it and just like collapses on it like kills herself i like that kill though but um but, like, but i'm a sucker for a saw blade kill always like, yeah it but like, matter. I, I just don't think he was that i i don't think that was an intentional choice i i just think he like it was just kind of a flower I, on his part I personally am not arguing any of these points. I, I, when I was watching though, I kind of felt it was more eighties than nineties. Like I think nineties were smarter in a way. And I, I'm not saying this is so dumb, but I just, this felt classic slasher to like maybe late eighties. Like, but it felt, it felt late eighties slasher more to me than it did scream. And I, and I'm not trying to compare it to scream, which I think is one of the best movies of like all time, but like, it just felt like, to the point of slasher where, like we said, it's a very simple plot. It's very, it's not overly complicated. I know there were teens, but there's teens in every slasher, like from the eighties, from the seventies. Like, so I just don't think the teens, whereas the nineties slashers to me, try to give these people, like you fucking love Sydney Prescott. Like there's not, a, I yeah. mean, she is I mean, rooting for her. Yeah. yeah. There's nobody in these. And I think technically, and like, I know what you did last summer. You're supposed to love Jennifer Love Hewitt. I mean, I don't, but you know, you know she's fine I, I what are you waiting for, for when she learns she yell oh into my the God, don't, I, the sweaters i <laughs> everybody's like shitty sweaters those movies always crack me up but anyway anyway I, like so i guess like the simplicity of it just remind me way more 80s than 90s so um where you don't care about anybody really no i guess you there's always a final girl to it i, I they were trying to make this girl a final girl and i yeah. think to the question that was brought up earlier, and if we're going to get there, is there a ser- Is this a series now? Is this going to get a sequel? Is this going to be a, you know, I assume they would put her right back in it. And she is like now, you know, I mean, it is no way he died at the end. We right. know that. So, And so I love that like, throughout this movie, they were very intentional about, they put stuff in there to structure an origin story for the car. For, yeah, for this. Yeah. So he can Even keep, down to know. how the mask got melted and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, yeah. So we like, it's, I mean- do I need more Thanksgivings? No. Right. Will we will we continue to do them if they come out with another one next year? Of course. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Gonna I need make Eli watch all of them. I need yeah. my righteous indentation at least once a year. <laughs> righteous well, and, indentation. And that's, that's the thing is if they found a holiday that was yeah. a gap in our genre, For are they going to make yeah. more of these? Yes, they're going to make more of these. <laughs> now, will it be Eli Roth again? It may not be Eli Roth. It'll be somebody else who picks it up. But the studio is going to make more of these movies. And they're going to be Thanksgiving movies. And we're going to have this new tradition of it's sort of the placebo between the, the Halloween movies and the Christmas movies. We we got the month of uh, November is taken care of now, which I'm totally OK with. Uh, I understand that it's a m- money grab. But if you make one. I'm going to probably going to go see it because there's nothing else to do right now. Yeah. And you're like, there's nothing in that time period. And um, horror movies, and this isn't a complaint, like horror movies are doing well. I mm-hmm. mean, they're reaching younger and younger people. We like Five Night at Freddy's. I watched it. It's terrible, but it just broke Blumhouse records. I yeah. mean, like, so if this movie did well, which I believe it did, um, yeah. we, will it we will get one. We will get two yeah. next year. We will get two next year. And like- I'll probably watch it. Maybe not in theaters unless we're reviewing it. Otherwise, I'll watch it streaming. <laughs> Honestly, I think another director like there there is a there is a concept here where like that this could feel like a like I because the reason I said seventy eight too because like that kind of theme style that was something you saw in the seventies days where you they have like your April Fool's Day or Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving and like yeah uh, like all that shit and like, even just like, the mask and the character right. like a faceless uh, well I guess if, so is it somebody name, I I think like in my mind and and I I know Dave you and I are going to disagree on this always like in my mind 
this felt like something Eli Roth just did because he didn't have anything else going on. It, whereas, like, if you give this to somebody who like is kind of hungry a little bit, or not even that to make this a great movie, just like you're like, I want to make this like a crazy fun slasher. This could actually be a really fun watching this guy in a pilgrim's hat and pilgrim boots or whatever, like running down the street with an axe. Uh, uh, like this would be really I like I could see myself liking the sequels of this better depending who does them than I did the than I do the original. But I think Eli Roth had fun doing this. So I'm gonna oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think he like, was like I think bored he did this, did this because this yeah, no. like you know, like those 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 directors who just now at this point have so much money to just throw around so they just have fun with something. Right. Like yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's well, what this well that, that's, that that's grindhouse trailer that he made and he had all made of this movie. buzz and it every, you know, obviously tongue in cheek, somebody saw the machete and said, let's make that into a full feature length movie. You know, in the back of his head, like, well, that Thanksgiving thing that would be a lot of fun <laughs> yeah. to work on. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think this was something he did as a default. I, I, I would argue against that because I think the setups and the kills that he put in here, I think he was having a blast. I think he was, he wanted to do something that was fun to your point. He hadn't done anything in a while. Um, and I think he wasn't going to try and do something outside of his range. This is well within the the lane of Eli Roth. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know that I could back the idea that he did this as a default thing. I, think I, I, I guess what I'm saying default. I'm, I, I guess I'm not mean like well I got I'm not no, I'm not getting anything else. I just mean like he like he was like well I don't have anything coming up. I got some time. This had people were interested in then I can pick it up now. Like I, I don't just like I uh like I, I think that's more what I meant, not just like, well, I'm not getting anything else. There's I'm only so many this. AMC specials I could be on. Right. He's like, yeah, <laughs> season two. How many like, can I host? How many ghost you know, shows like, or horror things? His, can uh, I host? his like documentary, I think's on hold that that shark hunting documentary is on hold. It came out. It did. Did it yeah. come out? Yeah, it yeah, came too. out like Three years, two years ago, or something. It's really good too. Well, I won't watch well, it. I think it's going to upset me too. One he filmed, he just yeah. filmed one That's this summer. I, I think he did a second part to it. Oh, maybe, but I know the one yeah. that was the he one was that was like, popular was. Oh, no, he did like, a he did a second part to it this summer because he was traveling around. Uh, yeah, 2021. I, 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 2021. Yeah, but he did a second part. I was watching on Instagram this summer. He was because he uh he had people like go to um uh that event they do every summer up in uh Martha's Vineyard the shark stuff like it was current thing but uh yeah like, I, 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 I think it's one of those things he's like i have some time my schedule i you know uh, there's not a lot sitting in front of me but like i i keep thinking about this so like i might as well do it now like that's what i mean when i say like it just kind of felt like he was like ah this now it's time to do it i'll do it now but that's fine yeah but like i said so another director though i could see if they give somebody else like this could act like this be uh like this could be fun yeah, I, I maybe, it could be a fun series maybe ari aster picks it up and does a a period piece thanks no thank you <laughs> deep down. you will not get me to watch that one um <laughs> it'll only be eight hours long <laughs> i mean it's it's like there is like not a lot to say about it but because it's so simple like they said it's a cheeseburger i get it like i'm just like but it's like it's it's very simplistic unoffensive for uh, yeah. It's doing so well. It's only gotten rave reviews, which is why I didn't even mind going really? to see. Yeah. Like, it's got an yeah, 83%. It's only, yeah, I haven't really read anything again because I don't do that. I didn't watch eight trailers. But like mm-hmm. once you said, should we see it? And I saw what people were saying about it. I was like, fuck yeah. Like, why not? Like, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's and, an Eli and Roth. Yeah. It's, yeah. And I think it's also, after seeing it, I was kind of like, well, why is it getting so many good reviews? But I think, Dave, to your and John point, because it's just, it's like unoffensive fun. Like people mm-hmm. are just like, oh, sometimes. Like that's just what people need. It's and not a heavy forget lift. that. Yeah. yeah. People forget that. Sometimes you just need, it's the same thing that people like, you know, my dad is a classic, like action movie. Like you give mm-hmm. him something that is simplistic, but just has like vengeance or revenge or S- silent night. Your dad's movie right yeah. there. What? Silent night. Go take your dad to see silent so, like, night. So what I'm saying is like, but it's just like, you know, sometimes you just need that that kind mm. of movie and not, you know, that's, that's a great point. And I hadn't thought about it until you just mentioned your dad and his experience with action movies. Sometimes you need something that's just a flat action movie. Mm. That's what the expendable movie. I mean, the expendables are the action version of what this movie is. That's what this is. It's yeah. just a horror. It's, it's just, just a, an action, like movie. a fun, just, just a horror. straight up horror movie where it's beat by beat what you expect it to be. 
it's just a new one. It's just another yeah. one to throw out, like to throw out there. And it's again, it's not offensive. It's not horrible. It's not. So it's got some good kills. It's not, you know, um, well, you can pick apart motive. Of course you can. But that's a horror movie. You right. could always pick apart motive. <laughs> well, I, I would go one step further. It's just fact it's a slasher. We don't really get a lot of these uh, anymore. That's uh, we don't get one that's not a remake of a reboot or like, you know, Halloween 93, even though I love those movies or um yeah. you or, know scream 88 yeah, like, exactly it's like a, it's an a, original we, yeah we don't get a lot of slashers i don't think like i mean if you think about in the last like five years we've maybe got what not counting like the big big ones but like maybe three maybe are four. we counting terrifier in there i would say so we count terrifier i would say and then like what hellfest so uh, that's a cocaine beers. No, no, it's not a slasher. Don't you dare. You get out Babe, here. I loved it, but I'm not putting it in that category. Get hell out of here. Um, uh, and then the other thing too, like I, I can see, like I said, I, I have my taste. I know how I am. I could see like people enjoying this. We're like, if we're being honest, the last couple of years, like we maybe get what five decent horror flicks a year. Yeah, it's true. No, we don't get many. Shit. Like I literally was thinking about it's, this year yeah. and like I tried watching. I mean, I did watch. I watched Five Nights at Freddy's and I'm not even trying to make that. That wasn't even horror. Like, I didn't mm. realize as I was watching. Yeah, that for that, kids. That wasn't yeah, that was more horror. for kids. But like, I'm just saying whatever has come out yeah. recently. Uh, it's like, not I tried ghost movie. to watch. You know what I mean? There's pretty much all ghost movies now. Yeah, I don't. So, yeah, so. Unless you want to see the Warrens fight like their 900th nope. nun. Nope. You know, like can I can see Lynn where Shea like back, like doing a wrestling moves on the ghost. <laughs> Listen, I after, is in everything. after just, watching just the fine. new Insidious, I don't know if I could ever see her again. <laughs> She's in I, everything. I yeah. think I'm banning her. I think on my drive home, I had the experience, and it's it's the same thing y'all are talking about here. I had the experience of having the pleasant realization that I had just spent an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes, whatever the total is on this movie with a horror movie. And I didn't get preached at once. Yep. Yes, exactly. And that was yes. fantastic. Yes. You're just watching a goddamn slasher for yeah. no, like right. just to watch. Yeah. I didn't hate myself deaths. at all. No yeah. stakes. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It wasn't artsy. I can see that too because yeah. like, you get a lot of artsy horror anymore. And like, no, it's I just a fucking appeal. slasher. Like, trust me. Like, I may not like this, but I get it. Like, I get yeah. the <laughs> the appeal. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, this wasn't like, you know, like I yeah. get it. And like, and I could see myself. Like I said, I could honestly see myself liking it. Like, if another director gets a sequel, yeah, the sequel is more than the original. Like, right. yeah, like, like Final Destination me, for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want like, like, to see it get cornier or like, yeah, Final Destination. Yeah, you get like the original and then crazier, ridiculous. Yeah. And, and as, as much as I've defended this movie, I said it at the top of my my feedback on it. I know that I'm going to totally forget this movie in three yeah. months. Hmm? Like it is not going to stick with me, but I'm going to be really appreciative and grateful for the time I had. I had and you'll watch it next Thanksgiving, I bet. Dave. Exactly. Sure. When it I, comes I was to say streaming, it. it will pop up. This Jamie and we've referenced these kind of movies before. This is a movie that's going to be on all the time in November on some TV series. Oh, of course. It's yeah, going you're going to be get, on somewhere. It's, Prime time. They again, yeah. like I know you mentioned it, but they got a holiday that there is not nobody. First of all, let's thanks killing is never on television right. somewhere. Yeah. So it's not <laughs> so yeah. like this is going to be on. It's a modern horror. Some first it's gonna go through whatever, first it's gonna go through HBO, mm -hmm. then it's gonna go through who put this out actually? Do we know which TriStar? Oh my and, god, uh, who are they owned by? You don't know what Sony. But oh. but the reason I meant said you don't know, this is the first TriStar horror since a little movie you love called Evil Dead 2013. Mm -hmm. Oh, this really? The first horror of the movie that TriStar. Wow. Since okay, TriStar. Mm -hmm. I see you. Well done. Well, like, I think... We're, I mean, I, it's no Evil Dead 2013, right. but yeah. No, it's a totally different kind of movie. But No. But like, yeah, I, I, I gotta... Like, I, listen, trust me. Like, I get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> am, I, am I passionate about my opinions? I sure am. Sure. Yeah. That's and why you're I, here. That's right. And do I love slashers? And will I defend them when I think they're poop when they're not poop? Sure, we'll do. But like I said, I also get it because like even I was sitting there they're like, oh, thank God. I don't have to see the fucking words. Yeah, exactly. Like You've been begging for an original. To, like Lynn Shay is not like I, I've also not seen 90 year old Tobin Bell fucking <laughs> pretend that he's 30 <laughs> years still younger. Haven't watched it, uh, but... Don't do it. I know. I, like, I'm, I'm working my way there. I'm only up to three. It's taking uh, a very long time. Like it's just like, like trust me. Like I, I get it. I, I, the thing that like I said, one thing I was like disappointed though too is like even for a horror flick, like even like people that went and saw it, right? I had two, I only had two horror trailers before it. And both, one of them was this like that imaginary Blumhouse's new artsy fartsy, like 
weird shit that looks stupid as fuck. And then uh, that one about it's all about like what if you get stuck in a swimming pool and Marco someone Polo? yeah like whatever like it's fucking yeah. like that. They're both. I, I think they're both stupid. Blumhouse too. They're both. I they're didn't both see different. either of those. I didn't see the Imaginary. I keep getting that Nick Cage movie that I feel like he's gonna be nominated for oh, a, yeah. an Oscar the one where for. he's wearing the Aldi's Freddy glove. I keep calling it. Yes, when anybody's yeah. in everybody's dream, which is such yep. a weird concept, but at least it's oh, original yeah. and different. Like, yeah. I feel like he's going to be nominated or something. This is his year to be like appreciated for something. Not that I like. Did it. you watch Pig? No, I did, I did not. I did not. I, you know what's weird? I, I you know, you know now famous, we're going to talk about different. There's movies. that yeah. famous line where uh, in The Dark Knight, where uh, sometimes the hero lives long enough to see himself become the villain. Where I think Nicholas Cage is doing it, like he was the hero who became the villain, but he's been around long enough for him to become the hero again. He's, like, gonna, he's finally going to be I, like something I watched the to pig someone. And I was like, oh, Nicholas Cage knows how to act. Yeah. Oh, does he now? In Which, 20- yeah, I had not thought he knew how to act since Con Air. Oh, well, Jamie, on, just as a heads up, pig, the whole central part of the plot is around animal death. So just... That's yeah, true, oh, yeah. Fuck. Then never just, mind. Just that, a heads up. That's true. Nope. nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. But yeah, like, but like, I, and like, then I, like, you're right. Like, this might be just crazy enough. People like that, that I haven't watched it yet, but people like that fucking Ren. Yeah. Uh, that he the was what? in play Dracula. Mm-hmm. Renfield. Uh, oh, Renfield. I didn't oh, like Renfield. it. It was not, it was not good. Oh, really? oh, but people like him with Dracula. Like, he's, so like, it, I think at least he's still doing like that weird shit uh that people appreciate. I just think like this movie is weird enough for him and serious enough that it yeah. might get him something finally. Mm-hmm. Not that again, not that I like him or dislike him. Yeah. I just think he's been around so goddamn long and playing the same role so often that this one seems a little, a little bit like still in Nick Cage wheelhouse, but it's serious enough where people might say, oh fuck, like he can I, he can do something. Did you watch that. the like color? Mandy. Oh God no. Yeah. You, I would agree with the, the rock color too, please. Wait, wait, did you guys watch the color of space? I did not because I, I hated Mandy. The one so. out of space? Or yeah, that's what I meant. It's uh, on the list. I thought oh, he God. like I thought he did really well in that. I actually liked him a lot in that. Yeah. And that there's is a little turducken happen in that movie. Well, uh, uh, there is a little yeah, you're right. There is. <laughs> there is a little turducken. I, well, would it be more like a that's just a duckin'. I, or I was thinking turduckins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, bringing it back to this movie to close Perkins, it out. Yeah. I, I assumed we were going to get the question, but we all seem to have the same one of best death. So, yep, mine was the chop in half in the dumpster. But yep. Like that, that seems one. to be everybody's. I like it. So uh, mine's the roasted mother-in-law. Okay, mother roasted. And then so Ooh, my, really? okay. my backup was going to be the the table saw, but again, I'm a sucker for a table mm. saw death always for some reason I, I, if i'm being honest i think the only death i liked was the the dumpster well, well yeah because i just like the lead up to it like uh, that was, that, was just, stuff? that was really neat like he like dunked her like she was a fucking dish and then like opened that freezer yeah and, and stuck her. slapped her right on it and then just backed up like i the that was just uh like the way he did that it was just so smooth i was like that reminded that me that scene reminded me too of the scene that sticks with me in cabin feeder, but it wasn't as successful. Like forever. I will. I listen guys, I'm surprised to people. I'm a female and um, you know, every single time I'm in the shower, shaving my legs, I have fucking flashbacks to that movie <laughs> because I'm just afraid it's going to happen. So the moment he stuck her to it, I was thinking, Oh shit, like cabin fever all over again. And mm-hmm. it just wasn't as, impa- he'll never, capture that visceral like i don't think i'll ever have that again and that's one of those movies it's such a dumb see a lot of things in that movie though have stuck with me it's, it's weird, in your head like, rent free mm-hmm. yeah there's yeah. some other scenes uh, in that, that even the get eli rath character from that movie is probably in your head rent free yeah, mm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yes <laughs> rent free all those characters in that movie are rent free like kind of oh the the douchebag whatever his yeah. name is that main guy <laughs> oh my god but that's his characters they're all the fucking same except they're terrible over the people. top Crank over the to top 11. like yeah. like yeah and th- these were the same kind of characters same, same. other than the final girl i think she was she was more demure than a lot of she the was toned characters. down she was toned down but the rest vanilla. of them like i mean god that waitress was so eli roth like <laughs> oh, yeah. the waitress the other school kids everybody Nassles. in that parking lot all were so eli Ro- yeah we're all so eli roth like like wanted to throw up but in a way you know what i mean though like it was just I'm- so painfully obvious eli roth yeah, you, you know, know what? The, I, was, okay. I was just gonna say one of the things I love about this is when I started looking into some of the trivia that's out there. One of the biggest piece of trivia is, is that 
um, when Patrick Dempsey found out that Eli Roth was working this production up, like he found out that he was going to try and make that uh, little trailer that there was a lot of buzz around into a full length movie. He had his agent reach out and beg for a role in this. Really? Movie. really? That's so, adorable. Which I think is very cool. Cause apparently Patrick Dempsey is a huge horror guy. He's never been able to That's do adorable. Um, and he wanted to be in a horror movie. And I, well, it sounds I like he's going to be in a few this. now. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to get him in Scream 7 or whatever because exactly. oh they have God. nobody. I, that's funny you brought Patrick Dempsey because, you know, I was going to say the worst part about this movie was the accent in? he was trying to do. Oh, his accent. Oh, my God. Every time that's not an spoke. accent, brother. That is not, not his. He's from Maine. That is his he native is? voice. Yeah, he's a fuck. No, it's not. Yeah, he's from Maine. He he, he wasn't it, amping that up. He had to yeah. be amping that up. Oh, my well, God. Well, I don't know that he was amping it up, but I can tell you that he is a New Englander. Oh, boy. And he's he had to flatten out his uh, his accent when he went to Hollywood and started being in movies. That is, And he said Eli, this in Eli, I thought so, too. That's as close to his natural voice as you'll ever hear in a movie. Love that. You, you know what's crazy about that is like, like if you look at like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, right? Like they they flattened theirs out, and then when they use that accent, oh, you can hear it, but it's like, oh, it still sounds like them, right? Like there's other actors I can point to and actresses that I can point out to. Even myself, I don't use my accent except for when I say one word that you all fucking make Whoop. fun of me for. What? That he sounded like a fucking cartoon he every time like a he main talked. Man. He said, "There's I I I I will go." He sounded just grave. like Stephen King to me. No, he didn't. He sure did. You shut your mouth. That's okay. not even true. He, I, of Eli. all the Stephen yes. King movies I've watched, he has never sounded like that. None of them. No, Eli. Uh, I, I sometimes I, dead's better. That did not <laughs> sound like that. He did not sound like Judd. How dare you? Pepperidge Farm remembers. He didn't even sound. How dare you? I just want you know the most like many accent. I think of most of all of his movies, which is probably my favorite Stephen King movie, which is Storm of the Century, and like they didn't even sound like that. I don't know what to tell you, but he is from Maine, and he he's that's as flat as his na- native voice as he's ever done, and he'll never be able to return all. And to your point, I think it's so jarring because he's never used his native voice in any anything he's been in. He's always, you know, flattened it out for whatever he's in. Well, if he's talking like that, Hillbilly, I can see why. Because everybody would like get the fuck out of this movie. You'll you'll never act in this town again. <laughs> McDreamy, more like fucking McAirhorn, your fucking voice. Get the fuck out of here. That's what they say. Strong words. Strong, so, I'm, a strong, I'm a strong man. A man of my strong man of my word. Strong Look at this, people. His naked mole rat. Didn't word. think I was going to do it. And I <laughs> did it. And I'm going to wow. wear it every episode we record for the remainder of the year. I kind of love that the black of the sweatshirt totally it disappears it, into your yeah. background. And it's just <laughs> it's just your head hovering over a naked every mole time. rat. It's, it's, it's like awesome. my bat symbol. <laughs> like whenever you guys need me in like the holiday season, oh, you shine man. this in the sky. So well, what's like, his name, Eli? Well, if I'm the Mole King, <laughs> what would be like a second? What's the second in command of the, the king? Just call him Toady. <laughs> no, that's a stupid name. Like you Mole do General? Some sort of pun. Oh, on this would be the Hand of the something. King? Yeah. Antonius. Oh, some sort the Hand of, of the King. <laughs> so, okay. So, like, you had the, the best Hand of the King, right? Was Tyrion. Arguable. What if I call him Malerian? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of lame. <laughs> All right, you think on it and come yeah. back to us when I'll you think, have a. I'll, I'll, think, I'll think of it. Don't Any workshop it on, on, on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no other no. thoughts on Thanksgiving. I do have a Dave's Critter Corner this week. I was really excited when I saw it in the movie, and I did do some research on it because I thought something very unique happened. But any guesses what our critter is? The turkey. Well, nope. There, <laughs> nope. There's, it's the kitty cat. It's the cat from the the Oh yeah, guys. the one that the oh, when he pets it, that oh, yeah. has a great yeah, back has and feeds an adorable it. has yeah. I knew I mean I knew that was coming in a twenty twenty three horror because yeah. like it was just but it was adorable. It was still worth it. The payoff was worth it. Oh yeah, Eli Roth was so impressed with the cat's performance in this that he <laughs> nicknamed it Leonardo Leonardo DiCaprio. His name is Tonic. I even got a name this time. I was so excited because apparently Eli Roth is an animal guy. And that whole scene, just as a little piece of fun trivia, where uh, the carver kills the security guard who had run out, you know, cuts his head off, 
walks out, then comes back and feeds the cat is because one of Eli Ross biggest frustration in horror movies is when the killer kills a pet owner and then leaves the apartment or house. <laughs> Because Eli Ross is like, who the hell's going to feed this dog now? Or who the hell's going to feed this cat? So he literally put that scene in to show that. That's adorable. It, there is a limit to what the Carver will do, which makes me love the Carver more than any other slasher right now out there. I mean, he's actually conscientious about the pets. But the that cat also played Church in the 2019 Pet Cemetery. Oh, Tony was also there are a few Church. of them. He was one of them? Yeah. They're right. They were Maine Coons. So that yeah. cat, yeah. Here's what here's what blows my mind is because Maine, he is a Maine Coon, uh, which is a very sought after cat breed. Frickin' Tonic is a rescue. Aww. Like he's he's straight off the streets. Uh, but uh, his name is Tonic. Like I said, he is a Maine Coon. Uh, Maine Coons are the oldest cat breed in America. If you didn't know that, uh, and there is a there is a stupid like uh, um, urban legend that the Maine Coon is the product of experimental crossbreeding with cats and coon raccoons. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> what? <laughs> that is not true. That's uh but uh I have to assume, Eli, to a point you made earlier, it is a Maine cat. Yeah. So it probably has an accent very similar to Patrick Dempsey. Oh my god. Nice. I, would, I would throw it out in the streets. <laughs> I would they, throw it out in the streets. They, they believe that they have possibly been in the Americas since Vikings and other Europeans used Ooh. to sail with long haired cats. And I don't know if you know anything about sailing. I've never heard it in any of the campfire tales we've talked about, but a lot of the, a lot of sailors had cats mm -hmm. on board as Ethan, mousers mouse because you had rats. rat, you mm -hmm. had rat and mouse problems, which spreads disease and everything. So they would bring, and apparently the main coon they believe has been here since the Vikings used to come. Over. Also, you know why else they put cats on there? If you say uh, to eat, Jamie's going to sign up. No, off. no, I'm not going to say to eat. <laughs> no. Okay. They could, they could sense uh, bad storms, like in okay. typhoons, or and, like they were coming quick. Like the cats could uh, sense the the change in the wave structures. They mm -hmm. thought, like, or whatever. Because same thing now, like they sense earthquakes and stuff. But like the cats were real quick to sense it, and they would, uh, uh, they could know they get a little warning if something's coming. Cool. So uh, the Maine Coon is one of the largest domesticated cat breeds on the planet. Um, uh, an average cat or average house cat can get to be a, uh, a large house cat is uh, from eight to 10 pounds. That, that's a big house cat. A Maine Coon gets to be up to about 20 to 25 pounds. I mean, they're bobcats. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're big. I fellas. had one. I had one that I think was part Maine Coon. He was a strike, so we never confirmed, but he was ginormous He's like huge. you just said <laughs> they are known to be very sweet and very very playful uh they have great attitudes they're great family cats uh they're um let's see they're one of the few domestic cat breeds that can be leash trained you can leash train a Maine Coon to walk just like a dog um they're very vocal cats they love to sing apparently which it, you can go find videos of Maine Coons just singing on youtube and stuff like that they love the water which most cats hate water Maine Coons love to swim they love being in the water they're very cold hardy cats because obviously they're from maine so they uh, they have double coats kind of like dogs do so they love cold weather um mrs norris uh filch's cat in harry potter that's a Maine Coon mm -hmm. because uh Maine Coons are also very popular over in uk um let's see as far as adoption, and this is something I always put on, when we talk about an animal that has a high potential of becoming a pet, I always want to give people sort of a, uh, a heads up. But adopting a Maine Coon, um, th they're just great pets. I mean, everything that I found, there, there are some things that we're going to go over, but there's not a lot of concerns with adopting a Maine Coon in your family. They're very social. They need a lot of quality time with their people, but they're very affectionate. They're very playful. They're, uh, they thrive when their owners spend time with them and want to play for them. If, if you're not wanting to play with and spend time with your cat, why are you getting a cat? So I think that's, that should be a low stake situation. Uh, they love to learn tricks and perform. They're very easy to train, which is why they show up in movies and stuff like that. It's because they are very intelligent and easy to train. Uh, they are very big cats though, as I mentioned. So be aware of that. If, if you have a small place, this cat's going to be like having a dog. It's, They're it's heavy. Big, yeah. They're heavy. <laughs> Their average lifespan is between 12 to 15 years, but they can live well over 20 years. Like there are many 
uh, examples of Maine Coons living well over 20 years. As far as common health concerns, the things that you need to look at are pretty standard with a bigger framed animal. They have uh, hip dysplasia, spinal issues, heart disease, kidney issues, and obesity are, are sort of the biggest health concerns that you would have with a Maine Coon. All of that is the kind of stuff that can be managed with lifestyle, diet, and uh, general medical care. So there's, it's not a heavy lift, which is why I think they're so popular, but is because they're this huge cat. They're sort of a conversation piece. They have great attitudes generally. Um, but before you go out and spend the thousands of dollars you would have to, to buy one from a breeder, know that there are still rescue organizations. And I found three without even having to do a heavy lift. If you just Google Maine Coon Rescue, there are organizations across the U.S. that uh, have Really cool Maine Coons that are ready to adopt. We found ours in a park as a kitten. <laughs> I mean, no, like and back in the day, like we found we found ours. And my dad made the stupid mistake of telling two animal loving children, if you could catch it, you could keep it. And guess what? My sister and you I weren't spent going home whole day it. doing <laughs> whole day. And guess if we came home with that cat. Yeah, yeah, he, was, I, he was white. He grew up. We think he was part Maine Coon because he got huge. And I don't mean fat. He got huge. He was white. And and the thing about Maine Coon is very long. Like, mm-hmm. And he wasn't part Persian. We don't think. We think he was part Maine Coon because of his size mm-hmm. and his long hair. And like maybe he wasn't full Maine Coon, but he definitely had like Maine Coon in him because of how big he was, how long his fur was. They also, their fur gets matted. So you got to mm-hmm. like groom them, which is like annoying. You got to brush Yeah, they them. are a they long get, hair cat. And yeah, they get like dreadlocks. They get dreadlocks in their fur. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. some dogs do and some, you know, like they get. Yeah, I think in the Pet Cemetery remake, that's what he looks like. He's his hair kind is of matted. matted. Yeah, he's there. like yeah. matted, and yeah, yeah. There's a farmer back home that he had like one day he like went outside, heard noise, and there was two just sitting on his back porch, <laughs> and he's like he opened the door and they just walked in his house, and then he just kept them. He would he yeah, would they're drive, his now. Yeah, he would just drive around with them in his truck, uh, and he always kept a, a can of uh, Vienna sausages with him, <laughs> and like if he'd go somewhere, whatever, like they'd come out with him. Uh, he had little, like little, little twine leashes he made for him, and he'd sit there just feed them those Vienna sausages. Then they get all get in the truck and they go. Very cool. Well, that's everything I had about the main coon. I will just say a tip of the cap to Eli Roth as a filmmaker for making sure that the animal in this movie was properly credited. It was this freaking film yeah. credited <laughs> so, and taken care of. It was adorable. Yeah, it was the best scene. <laughs> it's also so, funny the actor that owned the cat, or the actor that. It was supposed to be his cat, you know, uh, Tim Dillon, one of the biggest conspiracy theorists in Hollywood. Oh, oh boy. Really. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, it's like your brother from another mother. No. No, he there's follows a, them. He's not a conspiracy there, there's theorist. A, there's a difference, right? I <laughs> don't necessarily follow them. I have my own theories. Yeah, they're I not theories you read them, though. When I said follow, though, I, I meant you read them. I with fact <laughs> if I believe them. Uh, he just blues all of them. That's correct. Yes. Well, this is the perfect segue. So, uh, Eli, tell us what are we following up Thanksgiving with on Campfire Tales? Well, um, you know, uh, this movie this is a movie based on uh, it's not a legendary. And I, I, I was looking uh, and I was like, you know what? I didn't have fun. So I'm like, I'm going to bring the fun back and fun's giving. Uh, so we're doing a Mole King Vito. Uh, what? Spo- yes. And a little what? volume three. We're going to talk about the only what I would call mummy from America. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to be talking about the bandage man. So uh, <laughs> you have to look man? for it. That sounds yep. like something from America. That also sounds very donkey lady. If I'm being very honest, or it or is or not. How lady. dare you? Maybe the closer bandage to her. man. That how dare you? you you're going to be embarrassed. The uh, rubber band man. How crazy this tale is. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Sure. So we hope you've enjoyed the the review tonight. If you did, we ask you to subscribe, rate the show on whatever podcast platform you listen on. This is our last movie review of 2023. There is another main show coming, but that's going to be our uh, year in review with the crew kind of thing we're going to talk about the movies we watched this year what we love some of the high points some of the low points uh just sort of a a family uh meeting around the kitchen table so we always look forward to that at the end of each year so that'll be coming in a couple of weeks Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the podcast or what we do or kind of what kind of movies we watch i I know that this one sort of strains our usual format but it was one that uh, we thought would be fun to jump on 
since we had a, a little gap time here in November. So we're unapologetic that uh, this was this was a good time. It was a good cheeseburger. Unfortunately, Eli was frustrated that it, he didn't have pickled chips and uh, I like pickles, bro, and uh, macaroni and cheese to slather on his nah, cheeseburger. Okay. So he was disappointed. But uh, <laughs> I, I can get down with a basic cheeseburger. Listen, so, I wanted a Five Guys burger. <laughs> Eli Roth brought me a gas station hamburger. Okay. Uh, but if you want to learn more about us, you can go to our website, thewickedwild.com. Uh, a lot of fun information on there. A lot of articles from uh, guest contributors and from the crew here uh, that you can watch. We also have a, a merch shop there with T-shirts and hoodies and other fun things, hat caps, decals, all that kind of stuff. If you want to show your support to the podcast, we certainly appreciate that. Um, as far as a free Marshall this week, um, I do want to just give a quick shout out. Uh, to and this is for any of the outdoorsy people out there. I was trying to think of you know somebody within the boutique or uh, sort of cottage industry of outdoor gear that I enjoy. And one of my favorites is ULA Ultralight Adventure Equipment. They make ultra hyperlight uh, backpacks and backpacking gear uh, that's really reasonable. Uh, I think a basic ultralight backpack from one of the big brands that every it's, everybody kind of uses as a, a brand snobbery, which is a big thing on the trail that I'm not going to get into right now. Those things cost like six, eight hundred dollars. A ULA pack, which is built better and lasts longer and is the same weight, is a couple hundred bucks. So ULA, go look them up. <laughs> That's all. ULA, we could team up and do a Mole King edition if you wanted to. Just uh, let me know. I'll tell you the specifications that's required. Uh, Eli, I, I hate to break it to you, but I mm -hmm. doubt very seriously ULA knows we exist. I don't think anybody from that organization. I think you. Uh, I think you. You. Uh, you underestimate are underestimating influence. the mole kings. <laughs> what he can touch with his mole right, hands. Look, they literally. This company made a mole king Christmas shirt for my <laughs> loyal subject. You've Ooh. already forgot the name of. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good name. You know what he can be? Uh, he can be the mole jester. No, you know what? I don't want to say that because that sounds like molester. So we're not going to do that one. I'm going to keep thinking about Ooh, it. I think I have a new name for what you got on your chest. What is that? The molester. No, I don't like that. I mean, that was a mistake. I should have said that. <laughs> it's out there now. Oh, man. All right. Well, he's molester. So that's what <laughs> his name's is. Lester. And he's Lester. A mole. He's a mole. <laughs> if you want to follow us on social media, you can do that on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, at Wicked While We Are, Slasher, which is the horror only community, at Wicked While We Are. We are on Instagram, at Wicked Wild Pod. And then YouTube, if you want to see our smiling faces where we, while we talk and joke and threaten and hate and get angry and talk about the end of the world. <laughs> If you want to see us uh, sweat that out, you can do that on YouTube. Just search the Wicked Wild Podcast. If you have any feedback, if you have any uh, insights, or just let us know what you think of the podcast. We'd love to get that stuff. You can send it uh, an email to me, podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, at thewickedwild.com. Uh, and then just to close, just have your Wicked Wild Truth of the Week, which is hiking is just taking a walk where it's okay to pee. Have a good night. Sorry.